Welcome to the Daily Report on November 13, 2024. I'm Lindsay Reiser. Tonight, a major boost. Republicans gain full control of Congress, giving President-elect Trump another victory. This as Trump announces more picks for his administration after returning to Washington for the first time since winning the 2024 election. The selection of Matt Gates for Attorney General, Marco Rubio as Secretary of State, Tulsi Gabbard as a Director of National Intelligence. It's just a very nice gathering. Isn't it nice to win? It's nice to win. We are excited to reclaim the majority and to get to work with our colleagues in the House to enact President Trump's agenda. President Biden met with President-elect Trump for approximately two hours in the Oval Office. Politics is tough, and it's, uh, in many cases, not a very nice world, but it is a nice world today. The inflation numbers don't move in a straight line. Uh, you know, they go up, they go down all around in a given month. But the trend lines are still moving to lower inflation. I want to congratulate uh, my dear friend, uh, Governor Mike Huckabee. I think he will be a great ambassador to Israel. Right now, there are 900 trucks that are inside of Gaza, Karem Shalom, that backed up. They can't be distributed because of this looting and because of the criminality. Thank you for joining us. We begin our report with President-elect Donald Trump selecting two loyal allies for key roles in his administration. Trump has chosen Florida Congressman Matt Gates for Attorney General and former Hawaii Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard for Director of National Intelligence. Trump's cabinet is quickly taking shape with the president-elect elevating some of his most vocal supporters on Capitol Hill and cable TV. Earlier, Trump met with his soon-to-be predecessor in the Oval Office. President Biden welcomed him back to the White House, where they spoke privately for about two hours with their respective chiefs of staff. The two men exchanged a few quick words in front of the White House press corps. Mr. President-elect and former president, thank you, very Donald, much. congratulations. Thank you. Very much. And uh, looking forward to having a, like we said, a smooth transition. Politics is tough, and it's. Uh, in many cases, not a very nice world, but it is a nice world today, and I appreciate it very much. And a transition that's so smooth, it'll be as smooth as it can get, and uh, I very much appreciate that, Jim. The meeting of the incoming and outgoing presidents is a tradition to facilitate the peaceful transition of power. It did not happen in 2020, as Trump was contesting the results of that election. Meanwhile, we now know Trump will have an easier time moving his agenda through Congress. CBS News projects Republicans will retain control of the House. The party also flipped the Senate in last week's election. Let's bring in CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent Major Garrett. Major, thanks for being here. I want to ask you about some of the latest uh, cabinet picks mm -hmm. by Trump. But first on the White House, how would you characterize that interaction between Trump and Biden? I doubt either of them have the other on their holiday card list. Probably not, but it is power present. Welcome back to The Daily Report. I'm Lindsay Reiser. Here are some additions to our top stories. A D.C. district court judge has ruled that Facebook parent company Meta must face an antitrust lawsuit from the Federal Trade Commission. The FTC is accusing Meta of stifling social media competition by acquiring Instagram and WhatsApp. In a statement, Meta said it is confident a trial will show the acquisitions have been good for competition and consumers. Tesla is issuing its sixth recall of its cyber trucks this year. On Wednesday, the company recalled 2,400 trucks due to a faulty part that could lead to a loss of power when the driver accelerates. Tesla says it's aware of five warranty claims tied to the problem, but has not received reports of crashes or injuries. President Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping will meet on Saturday, possibly their last interaction of Biden's presidency. The two will talk on the sidelines of an economic forum in Peru. Biden and Xi are expected to discuss heightened tensions over issues including the South China Sea and fentanyl. One week after President-elect Donald Trump won back the White House, some Democrats are already linking arms to resist his incoming administration. Two Democratic governors, Illinois' J.B. Pritzker and Colorado's Jared Polis, have launched an alliance called Governors Safeguarding Democracy. The goal is to create a so-called toolbox with policies and methods for states to respond to federal actions taken by Trump during his second term. Meanwhile, congressional Democratic leaders say they plan to hold private meetings with rank-and-file members over the next three weeks to discuss what they believe went wrong with the election and how to move forward. In a story with The New York Times last week, Massachusetts Democratic Congressman Seth Moulton said he believes, quote, 
Democrats spend way too much time trying not to offend anyone rather than being brutally honest about the challenges many Americans face. He went on to say, quote, I have two little girls. I don't want them getting run over on a playing field by a male or formerly male athlete. But as a Democrat, I'm supposed to be afraid to say that. Well, Massachusetts Democratic Congressman Seth Moulton joins me now. Congressman, thanks for being here. Good to see you. You've been getting flack for those comments, but you've been doubling down, saying the Democratic Party is out of touch. Do you accept the GOP's premise that Vice President Kamala Harris stood for they slash them and Trump stands for everyone else? The problem. Are you looking for some good reads before 2024 ends? Amazon's got you covered. From a mystery novel to a retelling of a classic, the online retailer's editors reveal their top picks that will have you booking it to your nearest library. You're watching The Daily Report. The National Hurricane Center says a system brewing in the Caribbean will likely strengthen into a tropical storm. It comes as the northeastern U.S. continues to battle multiple wildfires. Here's Richard Knapp from our partners at the Weather Channel. We're going to have a dangerous tropical storm and maybe even hurricane over the Western Caribbean for the next many days. The waters are warm, the wind shear is weak, and there is land nearby. That brings not just the danger of strong winds affecting populated areas of Central America, but also very heavy rains, especially concerned about a place like Honduras, where this weekend the system could hang out near the coast. The more it stays over water, the stronger it could be. But then eventually another frontal system crossing the continental U.S. into early next week could bring the system into the Gulf of Mexico, places like Florida. Need to watch this very closely. The first front is currently moving through the eastern U.S., and you think maybe this is going to bring some much-needed rain to the northeast, but it's going to be New Jersey northward that gets shut out from rain from this system, and more fire risk will be happening in the mid-Atlantic and the northeast, strong winds and dry weather. For more in-depth coverage, watch the Weather Channel on cable and now live on your favorite TV streaming device. Richard Knapp, thank you. There's still time to add more books to your 2024 library and to help you choose, Amazon has released its list of the best books of the year. The Boys of Riverside by Thomas Fuller topped the list, which is compiled by Amazon Books editors. It's a true story about the rise of an all-deaf underdog high school football team. The editors say the book has captured readers' hearts. The other books making the top five include The God of the Woods by Liz Moore, James by Percival Everett, The Women by Kristen Hanna, and The Small and the Mighty by Sharon McMahon. Here's a look at some of the stories we're covering in our next hour. President-elect Trump heads to the White House as he prepares to move back into the Oval Office. The latest from his meeting with President Biden and a slew of new picks for his upcoming administration. A U.S. government worker is charged with leaking classified information on Israel's military plans, the latest on the charges. And new consumer price data sheds light on the state of the U.S. economy. We'll break down the numbers and take a look at crypto's continuing surge. You're watching CBS News.